la 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 Um so mal, che moche cotto batto, hinne di mucha nu me so mal, che moche cotto batto, hinne di mucha nu me so mal, hinne di mucha nu me so mal. Hinne ni mucha nu me so Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat 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 shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shabbat shalom, Shabbat shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat 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 shalom, Shabbat shalom, Hey Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 Shel Shabbat Lehadlik Nel Shel Shabbat We join together. Shabbat Shalom, and welcome back to our place, as we hope we're welcome to your place. Uh, it is Shabbat, so let us raise our cups of wine uh, with this symbol of joy and of hope as we join together in chanting. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. Amen. Amen.
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kishanu b'mitzvotav, V'rasavanu, V'shapat kosho, V'yahava uvrason, Inchilanu, Zikaron lemaase, Vereshit, Ki hu yom tehila, Lemikra e kodesh, Zecher li tzihiyat, Mishraim, Ki vanu vacharta, Liotanu kidashta, Mikal hamim, Vishabat koshecha, Biyahava uvratzon, Hinchaltanu, Baruch atah Adonash, Mekadesh HaShabbat, Amen. Shabbat Shalom to your good health, L'chaim. To your health, L'chaim, L'simcha, L'shalom. Amen. Salud. And now, whether you prefer to remain seated or to stand, we'll join together in the Baruch Hu and the Shema. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMivorach Baruch Adonai HaMivorach Le'olam Va'ed Together we proclaim Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Porushem kevod malichuto le'olam Please be seated, and Amen. now we'll continue with a little bit of Lechad Odi, welcoming the Shabbat Bride. Lechad Odi, Likrat Kala, Likrat Kala, Penei Shabbat, Nikabela, Nikabela. Lechad Odi, Likrat Kala, Likrat Kala, Pene Shabbat Nikala Nikala Shabbat Isachor Bidibur Echad Kishmianu El Hameyuchad Adonai Echad Ushemo Echad Yishmiyem Udiferet L'tilah We join together Lecha Adodi Likrat Kala Likrat Kala Penei Shabbat Nikabela Nikabela Bo'i v'shalom Bo'i v'shalom Atteret b'alo, gam b'simcha, u'v'tzoch olam. Toch emune am sigula, bo'i kala, bo'i, bo'i kala. And now, please be seated if you haven't already, and we'll continue with the chanting of Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta, et Adonai Elohecha, 
בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאותיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצפה היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובלקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך למען ויסורו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם And now in English, of course. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away. Recite them when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign upon your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe these words on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Thus shall we remember to observe to do all the mitzvot good deeds. And thus shall we remember to be a sacred and holy people to our God, to the world. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Adonai is our God who brought us out of the land of Egypt to be our God. Adonai is our God. We are in the midst of uh, Pesach, which uh, by its Hebrew name is called Chol HaMoed Pesach. And uh, so by custom, we continue with the traditional modalities and tunes of the Passover holiday and sing uh, the Micha Mocha, the song of the crossing of the sea to the tune of Adiru. And because we're in um, Shabbat of Pesach, Chol HaMoed, um, I will chant for you, as a prelude to Micha Mocha, a little bit uh, from our Haggadah, which we all just um, read or chanted. Um, and this is the line, the Exodus line. Zahor et yom hazel אשר יצאתם ממצרים, מבית עבדים, כי בחוזק יעד הוצאתי אדוני אתכם מזה. Remember the day on which you went forth from Egypt, from the house of bondage, and how God freed you and how God freed us with a mighty hand, and then Miriam and Moses and all of the people of Israel sang with joy 
At this time in the service, uh, we normally have the Amida prayer, which is either chanted or said to oneself. Uh, and that section ends with the prayer for well-being and for peace. So let us uh, this evening, uh, since the well-being of so many people and their health is uh, very much uh, at stake uh, in our hearts, we join together in the Misha Beirach. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. <speaking in Hebrew> Bless those in need of healing with refuah shalema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. And now let's just take a few moments for private introspection, prayers for the well-being of ourselves, our dear ones, and indeed for our entire world. A reading from the, the great esteemed theologian, philosopher of Abraham Joshua Heschel. To bless, to pray, is to hope, is to hope and regain a sense of the mystery 
that animates all beings, the divine in all that we do. And prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. It is all we can offer in return for the mystery by which we live. Who is worthy to be present at the constant unfolding of time? Amidst the meditation of blue sky and stars, the humility, the constancy of nature, the humility of flowers, wiser than all alphabets, here we are. We complain, we hate, we hunt, we hurt. Suddenly we feel ashamed of our clashes and complaints in the face of the enduring glory, the transcendent power of nature. How strange we are in this world and how presumptuous our doings. Only one response can maintain us. Modim anachnu lach. Gratefulness. Gratefulness for witnessing the wonder, for the gift of our unearned right opportunity to do mitzvot, for the gift to fulfill and to love. It is gratefulness which makes the soul great. Baruch ata Adonai, hatov shimcha ulechana er lehodot. It is good to express gratitude, to offer thanks. Always, it takes three things to attain a sense of well-being, of significant being. God, a soul, and a moment. And the three are always here. Just to be a blessing, just to live, is sacred. shalom. <laughs> Shalom, 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 Pesach, uh, especially on Shabbat, we read from the Torah the portions that uh, deal specifically with uh, the original Pesach as well as the traditions for all time. And uh, although we won't be together uh, as a congregation, at least not in person, 
uh, we are tonight a virtual congregation, and uh, there's some debate as to uh, whether uh, you can have 10 people for the reading of Torah if most of them are virtual. And uh, I will tell you that our Orthodox brothers and sisters oppose that, but the Reform and Conservative movement say absolutely. So that's what we're going to do. Would you join me in the blessings before the Torah? And after we hear the chanting, then join in the blessing after the Torah. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamavorach Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen. I have to get seated here. Um, Rabbi, you hold the Kiddush cup. I will pull up the, the Chumash. So, um, for Shabbat, Chocham Moed Pesach, the tradition is to roll back the Torah to the book of Exodus, to Shemot, and there's just a few little verses that are specific for this reading for Shabbat in the midst of Pesach. And this is the portion known as Kitisa, um, which is from Exodus chapter 33, beginning with verse 12. And if you're a, um, a Talmud Chacham, if you feel scholarly and you happen to have um, an Eitz Chayim, a Chomash at home, like we have a shul, you will find this on page five thirty nine. Page five thirty nine. It starts on 538. Sorry about that. <laughs> Amen. Vayomer Moshe El Adonai Ren Ata Omer Edai Al Et Ha'am Hazel Ve'atam Lo hodatani et asher tishnak imi ve ata amarta yidati chavishen ve gamatsati chen beinav. And Moses said to Adonai. Look, Re'e, you say to me, bring this people up. Bring this people up out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, a place of narrowness. Bring these people up to a promised land. But you have not informed me whom you will send to lead with me. And you have said... Moshe, I have known you by name, and you have also found chen, favor, grace, in my eyes. Moshe replies, Ve'atah 
הודי איני נא את ירחכו ואת האחרון למען אמצא חן בעיניכו וראי כי עמך הגוי הזה And now, if I have indeed found favor in your eyes, says Moses, pray let me know your ways, O God, so that I may know you, and so that I may find favor in your eyes. And consider that this B'nai Yisrael, these children of Israel, are your people. Vayomar פני ילכו וחניכותי לך וחניכותי לך ויאמר אליו אם אין פניך הולכים אל תעלנו מזה. And verse 17 to conclude ויאמר אדוני אל משה גם את הדבר הזה אשר דיברתי אעשה אשר דיברתי אעשה כי מצאת חן בעיניי ודעך ודעך בשם. And God said, I will let you behold me. I will do this thing that you have asked, Moshe. And Moses said, please, not nah, please, O oh God, may I behold your pana. your face, your panim, your presence. And God answered, I will make all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you my name, and I will proclaim before you and be present as a Shekhinah always with the grace that I grant and the compassion that I show. Concluding blessing, Rabbi. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה אמן Some thoughts to share with you this evening. Gashikoach, by the way. Gashikoach. Thanks. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, a little lightheartedness. Uh, I have a visual aid for uh, my Devar Torah this evening. Here it comes. Do you recognize this? Yes, you do. <laughs> Are you getting hungry? Yum. I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to talk to you about gefilte fish. Uh, everybody knows that that's uh, something that we enjoy at Passover. I think the word enjoy is probably in quotation marks. Uh, we enjoy it for different reasons, not necessarily because it's so delicious, especially the stuff that comes out of these jars, which definitely gives gefilte fish a bad name. But, this is Yehuda. Yeah, Straight this is Yehuda. from uh, Yerushalayim, the original. Oh, my goodness. No sugar. So... Uh, Some of you may be familiar with a uh, wonderful children's book for Passover. Uh, if you aren't familiar, uh, you should become that way. You can still get it on Amazon, I'm sure. And it's a great one for those of you that have grandchildren. It's called The Carp in the Bathtub by Barbara Cohen. And it's the story of these uh, two Jewish kids uh, who uh, realize or see that their mom every year at Passover Uh, brings home a live fish, a carp, and keeps it alive in the bathtub for a day or two uh, before it's time to cook it for um, gefilte fish. And uh, they decide that they really feel sorry for this 
poor fish uh, who seems to look them right in the eye, and they come up with a plan to rescue the fish from becoming gefilte. Um, I won't tell you the rest <laughs> of the story, but uh, you'll... What does you'll, it mean to become gefilte? You will enjoy it. So let's... Yes, okay, what does it mean to become gefilte? Manish <laughs> Um You may not know that uh, gefilte actually means stuffed. And uh, with that meaning comes quite a bit of Jewish uh, history and, and folklore. I, I need to interrupt for one moment to tell you the most ridiculous question I've ever been asked by a visiting group of people at the temple. One of the people raised her hand and said, is it true that Jews eat filtered fish? Not at this time. Not and this and I, I, it actually took me a while to figure out what they meant, but now, of course, you understand. So, gefilte fish. Well, um, this really harkens back to the days of, of the shtetl, when Jews, by and large, were impoverished. And to have a, a fish uh, was something of a delicacy, uh, reserved only for very special occasions, certainly Pesach and maybe, maybe Shabbat. So, uh, one fish uh, doesn't go that far. And so they devised a, a way of stretching it. I suppose this is the Jewish ancient equivalent of hamburger helper. Uh, they, they would take a fish, uh, presumably now deceased, and very carefully they would remove the skin, keeping the skin intact, then taking out the flesh, removing the bones, and then mixing uh, the, the flesh with, the, with matzo meal and onions and salt and pepper and whatever else came to mind, and then molding it into uh, sort of a fish paste, if you will, and then very carefully putting it back into the skin of the fish, covering the skin over, and baking it. And then when it came to the table, it came to the table looking like a fish, of course. Uh, and uh, hardly anybody do, does this anymore. It's labor intensive to say the least. Most people do buy it from, from a jar. But really the, the true meaning of gefilte fish has to do with the time in our past, uh, really the majority of the times of our past, uh, when Jews really were not so well off. And something as uh, lovely as a fresh fish had to be stretched for the, for the entire family. Uh, as an aside, uh, uh, one more aside, uh, quite a few years ago, uh, shortly after the time uh, that Glasnost enabled the Jews of the former Soviet Union to begin leaving, most of them went to Israel, but some came to the United States, and we greeted uh, a lot of them in San Diego, where I was at the time, and we decided to have a, a Seder for the, the Russian Jews and uh, invited uh, any that we knew of that were now new in the community to join us for Pesach. So uh, the, the invitation went out, and a day or two before the Seder, uh, we got a call from one of the Russian Jews, uh, speaking as best she could in, in uh, English, uh, broken, but English nevertheless, and she said, would it be all right if I brought uh, my special gefilte fish that my mom taught me? And how could we say no, of course? So uh, she brought the gefilte fish, and uh, sure enough, it was the type that I described before, still within the fish itself, uh, head and tails included, by the way. And since I was a rabbi, she decided I needed to be the uh, special guest, and I should get the best part. Uh, I think you've guessed it by now. It was the head. Uh, and it took all of my nerve and... It was not much of my appetite to be able to make her happy and uh, take the part of the fish that she treasured most. Um, I, actually, it's one of my best memories of Pesach, even though I'm not likely to have gefilte fish that way again. But the reason I, I talk about this t today or this evening is because uh, gefilte fish is more than just something you have at the holidays, which you can either enjoy or perhaps make fun of. I guess most people would say gefilte fish tastes great if you uh, put enough horseradish on it, crane, as, it as, as it's called. Uh, and uh, since you know that uh, one of my avocations is cooking, 
I'm going to put on my imaginary chef's hat for a moment and tell you a little bit about that. Should you be so inclined to make a filter fish, um, which you may or may not do, uh, you can actually do considerably better than uh, anything that is in the jars. First of all, you can use almost any kind of fish you want that's of the kosher variety, which leaves out uh, you know, several that you know about already. In general, it's one wet fish and one dry fish. So around here, uh, if you feel like spending a few bucks, it would be grouper and perhaps halibut. Uh, where I come from on the West Coast, the fish of choice is uh, salmon and halibut. And uh, all I can tell you is after you grind it up, fish is fish, especially after it's been cooked for a while. So uh, you might want to try that sometime. And for those of you who find the smell of the, the fish broth a bit overwhelming, uh, I'm happy to tell you that it can be cooked in vegetable broth, vegetable broth just as well. And unlike your mother or grandmother who used to cook it for hours and hours, Truthfully, a gefilte fish ball only needs to be cooked for about 20 minutes, and then it still bears some resemblance to actual fish. Now, uh, having said that, uh, a few other things, and then I'll conclude. Gefilte fish is definitely Ashkenazic. Uh, Sephardic Jews don't know from this, uh, nor do they want to know. I, I think that's probably true to say. And it divides itself in the Jewish community between the Galicianers and the Litvaks. The Glitzianers, basically uh, from Poland, believe that gefilte fish should be sweet, and so they add uh, sugar to it, and, and the Litvaks say, no, not sweet, so they add uh, lots of pepper. Well, that's, that's your choice in, entirely, and frankly, it doesn't make any difference. But when it comes to what do you serve it with, yes, of course, there is the crane, but an idea from the Jews of Mexico, with which I have some familiarity. Mi familia! <laughs> Here they are. If you're getting a little weary from uh, horseradish, here are two ingredients that you could put beside the gefilte fish for a pleasant surprise. Fresh salsa, or if you wish, salsa from a bottle. This is the red, this is the green, and uh, you can get them in spicy form or not spicy. And uh, if you wish, you can take the, sal the fresh salsa uh, from the grocery store, and if you'd like it more pureed, it works just fine too. But I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you try your gefilte fish uh, with with this, and that would be called in uh, in Mexico. It'd be a fish veracruzano. Add a few olives, and you've got the whole thing. So this really isn't so much intended as a as a cooking lesson as it is a lesson in in Jewish history and and sociology that when we eat the gefilte fish. It's really not just for tradition's sake, but it's for the sake of remembering very different times in our past, really not that, that different uh, than, not that long ago rather than today, and being thankful that uh, our lives are so much different than those of our grandparents and great-grandparents who came to here, here to the United States to escape their poverty and persecution of the past. And with that, I wish you a uh, Shabbat Shalom, a good yontif, a bon appetit, and uh, <laughs> let's see if you give that gefilte fish a try. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank and you. so we, we turn right now to the concluding part of our service to the Kaddish. And uh, this week we have some yort sites to recall from our, from our congregation. Karen Knell remembers Roger Knell. Sandy Clark remembers Goldie Solomon. Our temple family remembers... Joseph Gerber, Louis Kaufman, A.E. Roberts, David Stoll, and Celia Halpern. And as well as, as, as well, excuse me, all of us remember our own dear ones that we've lost in years gone by. And we also have in mind, of course, the many thousands that have been stricken by the coronavirus and hope that there will be a shorter list with each passing week. And so we say together, Yitgadal, Yitgadash, Shemei Rabbah, Bialma divra chirute viamlich malchute, Bechaye chon uvyome chon, Uchaye de chal beit Israel, Baagala uvizman kari vimru amen. Yehe shame rabba mebarach, Lealam lome almaya, Yitbarach, Vishabach, Vipoar, Vitromam, Vietnase, Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalau. 
Shemei Nekudashah Berichu, Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, Tushchata v'nechemata, Dabi run bi'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama raba min shamaya v'chayim, Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. O say shalom v'imramav, Hu ya'ase shalom, Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and bring comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'alko Yisrael. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'alko Yisrael. Yas Shalom, Yas Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'alko Yisrael. Ya se shalom, Ya shalom, 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 